New Mexico Democrats have a new man at the helm. Albuquerque attorney Sam Bregman won the election to party chairmanship this past weekend. Makes Dan Foley happy. I don't know why. Now, he's a former city councilor, as you might remember. Very familiar face on television during that reign. He's also well known for defending convicted felon and former state treasurer Robert V. Hill. Now, John, this is your former post. Somebody else do. First question. Will the Vahil defense hamper his public image? Is that going to come up, or does that really matter at this point? Is this, is this a new Sam Bregman? You know, I, I, don't, I don't think it really matters. I think Sam is a great choice. I mean, we, we had two good candidates running. Yeah. Um, Sam, as he's, he's a self-described pit bull, and I actually think that that's what the party needs right now. Gotcha. Uh, you know, we need to be no critiquing, to bulls, but sure. critiquing the governor a little bit. <laughs> there are many uh, angry pit bulls out there being compared to Sam Yeah, right and, and so I, I think it's good, and I don't think he'll be hampered. I think he's a solid guy. Yeah. He, people know he has integrity. and, and uh, Sure. Yeah. It, it, is, it is not as if he's been looking, I'm sorry, was not previously looking for this. He lost the last go round to Javier right. by a vote? By one vote. One yeah. vote. So it's not as if he's an unknown entity. But what's the trick here? Why not Sam Bregman then, but why Sam Bregman now? That's the part that interests me. Right, and I, I, I will make one quick correction Please. when you said he, actually, John was party chair. I was executive director, so I've That's never right. been party chair. There's a big difference. Right. There is a big difference. You get to um, hide in office. He did. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the thankless job and, and all the blame, That's right. <laughs> but none. Yeah, no. I mean, you're right. He he came very close the last time, and so there could have been some sense that you know he ran a hard race last time. That's right. He obviously wanted it. He still wants it. Yep. So there might have been a, a big feeling that you know that he he was the right guy for he the job. He had basically the same pitch last time. He when, did. You know, and but this time. Did it take losing a, a, a gubernatorial race to make some light shine over Sam Bregman now? <laughs> Is he a different personality? People see him in a different be. light now? I know? mean, it could be that people just wanted somebody more aggressive. I mean, there's uh, even, I think, Javier would agree that sure. he is nowhere near as aggressive as Sam Bregman is. And he mm -hmm. had other qualities, but Sam right. is is a pit bull. I mean, he is a trial attorney. Mm -hmm. He will go for the jugular. And I think people are wanting somebody who's aggressive, who stays on message, and I think mm -hmm. Sam Bregman can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that, you know, he, he did have some tough competition. I think sure. Roxanne Lada mm -hmm. is very well liked. Uh, she's She's got a lot of support among the women's groups, definitely, mm -hmm. and others. Um, you know, she, br she brought to the table um, a different part of the stage. So she's not right. Albuquerque focused, she's focused in the southeastern part of the state. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think that she brought a lot to the table, but obviously people wanted somebody much more aggressive that could take on the governor. Mm -hmm. What does this mean in the era of super PACs? What, I mean, this interests me uh, as well. Outside money, super PACs, the lack of control that party chairs have compared to John's time. Is it that I think it, I think it means or? I think it means absolutely nothing. I think this to me shows that the Democrats are throwing in the towel against Susanna Martinez. I mean, you're going to elect an Anglo New York trial lawyer that represents politicians, that represents pedophiles and criminals, and you're going to say that's the guy who's going to be the pit bull against the first female Hispanic governor in the United States. Anybody involved in politics knows that men don't do well taking on women. It's not a not a good starter for us. We don't we don't rise in the polls doing that. So I think it really is there a reason not to take her on aggressively. Well, I I think it, they act like she hasn't been taken on. I mean, I think the mm -hmm. the trial the trial the uh, unions sure. have been funding these packs right now that uh, Progress New Mexico and the other group that's out there that mm -hmm. they've been going after her relentlessly. Mm -hmm. And so I mean to act like that this has all been happening in a vacuum and that Governor Martinez has had a free ride is absolutely is absolutely not true I, I think it's interesting though that he's gonna go after her and he's gonna attack her and you know maybe he's going to want to partner. His job. yeah but he's gonna want to partner with Pete Denali mm -hmm. because now she's on her way to DC sure. to the vice president's house because she's been invited by the vice president to be there for Cinco de Mayo so but I that's mean, politics you know that well goes. I don't know Joe I mean Biden's not gonna come and stump for her no but it's pretty hard for the now. state it's pretty yeah. hard for the state uh -huh. Democrat chair uh -huh. to say that you're an evil person uh -huh. when the vice president in your party is showing up and saying come to our house come celebrate Cinco de Mayo okay. I think it's a fact and I think at the end and I think at the end of the day it's shows you know he he, he attacks her uh -huh. he's going to say he's going to attack her on the economic front uh -huh. you know uh, on jobs game, I would hope. It's, 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 sure. employment rate is okay, the lowest well, in the region but let's there's ask, been no economic ask, development for the well, last let's ask sam bregman how many jobs he's brought he owned a basketball team and he got rid of it how many jobs <laughs> left with the basketball <laughs> I forgot about team the basketball so team. i mean it's just, it's, just, in here. Well, I, it's just it's just it's just interesting that i think the democrats are punting this you could not ask for a better opponent for susanna martinez than sam bregman there you go diane your thoughts i think that's true because if sam bregman is running 
instead of your gubern the Democratic sure. gubernatorial candidate, there is always going to be that confusion in, in the separation. The thing that I found most interesting in Mr. Bregman's uh, comments, and uh, you know, we all are familiar sure. with the red meat being thrown out, sure. but after he attacked the governor, he moved, immediately moved to Jay McCleskey. And I'm sitting there going, okay, wait a minute. Both those men are really smart, talented gentlemen. Sure. They're both dedicated passionately to what they want to do. They both play to win and without mm -hmm. reservation to mm -hmm. win. Good They're very good at doing it. And the only difference I could see, Jay McCluskey works behind the scenes and Sam's out front taking all the glory and sure. grandstanding. Well, and so, sure. so how do you, how does your gubernatorial candidate stand up against your part, who's being outshined, yeah. but your party chairperson? Well, right now the guy leading in the Democrat polls for, for running for governor is, is the Attorney General Gary right. King, who Sam Bregman's on record saying he's the worst Attorney General in the history of New Mexico. <laughs> that makes a tough... That'll change. Well, he said it. <laughs> yes, I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter that he said but, it. But here's the state party 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 figure it out. But it was said. That's the problem. The problem is uh -huh. not whether he'll come back out and say I was wrong. Sure. The problem is that's fodder for I whoever it is. I hear it. John, you must be sitting here thinking, I'm so glad I don't have this gig anymore, but... <laughs> no, I, mean, I love being chair because it, it, it allows you to talk about the basic values of the Democratic Party, which are good jobs, right. at good wages, right. getting health care for everybody. These policies that we've spent most of the show talking about are Democratic policies. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, Sam is going to have a big critique of the governor, and it's going to be hard for her to fight back sure. about her economic record, which is non-existent. And frankly, there's not a single achievement that this governor can point to in the in, since she's been governor. Here we go. We're going to have to leave that as the last word, unfortunately, well, because... Yeah, well, no, no, it's okay. We'll start over the balance budget. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Good that's thing. all right. But Which we'll, is mandated by the Constitution. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it, guys. We're going on the clock. Now, as we go after some of the week's other notable headlines with just a minute on that clock. First up, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, the version of the craft that is set to launch from New Mexico, broke the speed of sound in its first powered flight. The craft is built in and was tested over the Mojave Desert, but Dan, is that significant? I mean, we're, we're rocking and rolling. Things are taking off. Oh, I think it's significant. As I've said many times in this deal, I think once it's done, you know, unless we find a better use of the spaceport, they're going to move to Miami and all these other places to do it. So I, it's significant because yep. we're getting there. The but competition's out there. That's right. You're right. Laura, your thought? Yeah, I mean, it's great, and, and there was a mention of the spaceport in all the stories I read, at least mm -hmm. from the AP, so it's getting a little bit of buzz, and I think hopefully that will help continue the momentum in, the, in that area. That's right. Guardian UK overseas mentioned New Mexico. That was kind of cool. John? Yeah, I'm excited about it. I, I, it just raises the question that I've been asking from the very beginning, and that is how many frequent flyer miles does it take <laughs> to get a free $200,000 ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Two million. Diane Snyder, your thought? <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. If I had 200 grand, I'd be first in line for the ticket to would go. Would you really, I, honestly? Oh, not me. Without a question. I got a million wow. things to spend 200 I, grand on besides that. I am so starry-eyed, no pun intended. I like it. Over this, I would go in a flash. Cool. Now we know something about you. Yes. This is great. It keeps costing more to go to class at UNM. Tuition for full-time Lobos has doubled in the last decade. You might have read about that. That's true most everywhere else, too. But Diane, let me stay with you. Is that a cause for concern? Or, or are we still a relative bargain out there when you look at the rest of the country or even the region, I guess? I, I definitely, we're a relative bargain. Yeah. I know if it's your own pocketbook, That's then right. it makes a difference. That's right. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about quickly is the fact of this impact on uh, the tuition lottery scholarships and the fact that the legislature mm -hmm. keeps saying the tuition credits that they have to do for, mm -hmm. uh, so it's making it more and more difficult for a university to find ways right. to cover their expenses minus sure. tuition. It's a tough sell if you've had three kids come up in the last 10 years to go to, to go to college, isn't it? It just means well, something at your table. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a relative bargain, um, but also uh, our kids are not getting the same kind of jobs that the kids graduating from University of Colorado, University of Texas, University mm -hmm. of Arizona are getting. And so I, I really think that uh, this is a bad time mm -hmm. given the state's economy. We've got 10 left. I'm going to give it to Laura. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, you know, we are still a relative um, bargain, but yep. we also aren't paying for a lot of those students, especially when they come out with advanced degrees. Yep. We're not paying them what other states would be paying them That's for those That's a very good degrees. point. Very good the tuition credit point. is a big deal. That's the thing the legislature's got to fix. That's a story that we need to discuss. That's a bigger problem. We're going to do it. Point. Glad you got that in. Taos Pueblo fashion designer Patricia Michaels just missed walking away with the top prize in the popular TV series Project Runway. Boo! <clears throat> She was the first Native American on the program, and Laura is just a cool achievement for a New Mexican, but if you saw her work, I know Diane has something to say about this, she has a talent. 
a yeah. serious talent, yeah. And it's just exciting to see somebody from New Mexico to be to be on that close to winning the whole thing. Yeah, I love that show, Dan. Oh, I, sh I turned it on one day, saw her, and I watched the episode. I watched the season with her on it. it she's un unbelievable, unbelievable treasure for the state of New Mexico. Okay. She's going to be a big name soon. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Diane. What do you think? She designed a couturier fashion her presentation. It was incredible. We need to follow up on that. Create yeah. economic development. Get her on your show. Put put do, do that. But have a place to manufacture it. Do the <sighs> kinds of things that that we that. Her own designer label, made here, Absolutely. made in New Mexico. Absolutely, made in New Mexico. Wouldn't Absolutely. you love it? Absolutely, John. Your thought? I love it. The Patricia Michaels label. It's too bad that she didn't yeah. get the 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 kind of show award-winning line, but it, hopefully yeah. one of these Lord companies will pick her up. Oh, That's right. Absolutely. Well, but yeah. life is long, isn't it? Just because she missed long. it on this one, it doesn't mean she's not going to be a success later. Now, another notable New Mexican, Heather Wilson, is about to become a former New Mexican. The one-time Congresswoman is about to become the first female president in the 128-year history of the South Dakota School of Mines. John, this isn't the future many predicted for Ms. Wilson, but when you think about the loss of that last go around for that Senate race, and politics is so funny, you think, well, what do I do? Now she's making 320 large up in South Dakota, doing pretty good. Right. I mean, I don't think anybody would have predicted this particular school. Right. Um, but it, all, although it's uh, like the New Mexico Tech of South Dakota, so it's a right. fine institution. Right. I mean, she's a, she, uh, Heather Wilson is an intellectual. She's a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah. She sat on the National Security Council staff. Sure. So it makes sense that she would be the president of a, of a higher educational institution. Makes sense. Diane, what do you think of this one? I think it's great. And, and where do we old politicians go after we leave public service? <laughs> you got to go somewhere. That's right. Maybe on New Mexico and Focus, please, Dan Foley. <laughs> it's the bottom of the barrel. Congratulations <laughs> to Heather Wilson. She's going to do a great job up there. There you go. Laura, what do you think? I think it's great. Yeah. I think just a woman being out there as a head of a mining Absolutely. institute is very and cool. First, it's something very female, interesting. And right yeah. next door to Mount Rushmore. There you go. I mean, you know. Is that it? Is she coming back to New Mexico? What do you think? Is this going to be it? I don't know. I think her heart's Winter here. Winter time. I think she her will. heart's here. She will. <laughs> Absolutely. Another new subject. Steve Cush, the executive director of the Bernalillo <laughs> County Republican Party, has been suspended without pay after using social media to call a supporter of an increase in minimum wage a foul name. And Pete Dinelli, Democratic mayoral candidate here in Albuquerque, used a foul Spanish term to describe Democrats who cross over to vote for Republicans. Laura, um, take either one of these, Mr. Cush, Mr. Uh, uh, Dinelli. Let me ask you about Mr. Cush. That was an amazing thing he, he tweeted about couple, that young woman at that thing. Suspension, is that enough? As did Bob Cornelius and in the follow-up. I think true both too. of them. And he apologized, though, Bob Cornelius. Yeah, uh, that and makes I, think, I think Cush should, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. it, it's both just in bad taste. I mean, really, you know, you, you have to be more careful and, and uh, recognize that other people are paying attention to what you're saying. Same with Pete Dinelli, though. I would say the same argument applies. You need to be more careful, know your audience. There's no, you know, and honestly, mm -hmm. if, if Democrats are voting for Republicans, it's because we don't have good enough Democrat candidates, period. They're not that particular word. Right. I I've myself have had to make that tough decision mm -hmm. from time to time because I've seen, you know, we have had some candidates here that have had some serious ethical problems and I just can't bring myself to vote for them at times. You so go. you just have to make that decision. I think it's up to us to have better candidates. A, I just think it's interesting Mr. Kush that, go though? Oh, I, I think he's I think he's going. I mean, okay. the, pro the the question is who are these two guys, Cornelius and Kush? I mean, sure. they're low level guys. 90% of the Republicans couldn't even tell you who they are. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger question and that everybody's been missing in the media is the Pete Denali deal. And I think he's a guy running for mayor. Mm -hmm. And what I find interesting is you look at his comment and then you look at his website where he says he's running for mayor to be above partisan politics. Doesn't look like he's being above partisan politics to me. Interesting. Ms. Snyder, last one for you. Unacceptable yeah. behavior. You, you, with the social media we have, if they wanted to text each other, right. I, I would still object to it if anybody found out. But that would be personal. Right. But to put it out public, I'm sorry, that's... That's not acceptable. Should he resign, John? Oh, oh definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, first of all, Pete's comment, although inappropriate, mm -hmm. and he withdrew it, is nothing like uh, uh, Cush's comment, which is an overtly sexist, objectifying, offensive mm -hmm. comment about women, mm -hmm. which is right along the lines with the trouble that the Republican Party has been having mm -hmm. in the last several elections. So it's obvious that the guy's got to go. The reaction that he had was not good enough. The mm -hmm. apology wasn't strong mm -hmm. enough. Um, and so I think it, it fits a pattern of kind of anti-women rhetoric coming out of sure. the Republican Party. Thank you all for a great night. Really terrific. Diane Snyder, please come back and see us. Thank you. I'd you were love great. To. You were great. Terrific. Thank you fun. all. Fire season is here in New Mexico, and as the heat rises and the drought continues, expect many more discussions of forest management and water policy here on the program. A reminder, you can ask questions or sound off on the week's program by catching up with us on social media. We can usually find us by searching the name NM in focus. 
I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.